Um, so let's just quickly go over this. So for question number one, A, B, C, D. It's saying, Jada says the diagram can represent 230. What does a small square represent for Jada? You should have had 10, okay? Um, for B, it says name a number greater than 230 that this diagram could represent. So you could do 2,300, you could do 23,000, you could do 230,000. Um, those are some options, don't have to be exact, but those are just some of the options that you, you could have put for B. All right, um, C says, Lynn says, this diagram can represent two and three tenths. What does a small square represent? You should have 0 0.1 or one tenth. So A and C are exact. Okay? If y'all can't focus right there, I can move you. Do you understand? Um, B and D are just examples of what you could have on there. All right, so again, um, some examples for D are 2,300, 23,000, 23, 10,000. All right, they give you another diagram. It's saying now that the, um, the four squares and one rectangle composed of 10 small squares. So A, it says, yes, these squares can equal 140 because if each one of them are 10, you add them up, okay? Um, B says, Diego says that the diagram can represent 410. Do you agree with him? You should say no because if one square, or one of the small squares equals 100, and you do 10 times 100, you get 1,000. That's just, again, that's an example of an explanation as to why. But you should have yes, and you should have no, okay? Um, it says here are some fractions. Select all the fractions that are equal to four and nine tenths. So you should have had 49, or 49 tenths. Should have had, I can't even talk. You should have had 490 hundredths. Those are the only two that go with the first one. And then B says select all the fractions that are equal to 49 um, thousandths. There's only one. <coughs> all right, for A, B, C, and D. Um, so for A, you are adding your decimals. What do you have to remember when you add decimals? What do you have to do with them? Mikhail? Line your decimals up. <coughs> So your answer for that one should have been $14.20. Uh, for B, what do you have to do when you subtract decimals? What do you have to do? Excuse me, line up your decimals. So that one you should have had $11.82. Um, C, you're multiplying. What do you have to do with your decimals when you multiply? What do you have to do with your decimals when you multiply? Jonathan? So don't line them up, right? So there, it doesn't matter that there's a decimal when you multiply, you just add it back in at the end. And then D, you're dividing um, $85.20 by four, and you end up with $21.30. All right, um, five is just multiplying. You should have got 456,285. Um, six is just doing some division. Remember, this unit is on long division, so you end up with 134 marbles. And then over here, um, what are the only two options that we have? You can multiply 80 by 1 tenth because this is 1 tenth of 10, or you can divide 80 divided by 10. All right, put this to the side. Now, we got this little warm up page, and we're going to kind of skim around this page a little. We're not going to do everything on it. Um, vocabulary is super important when we're dealing with division. So, we are going to discuss that today. Um, real quick, someone pick one of these to complete. Just give me one. 12 divided by 4 gives me what? 3. You can also do three times four equals 12 to check. All right, somebody give me another one. 50 divided by 10. So 50 divided by 10 gives you what? Five. Five, and you can do five times 10 equals 50. All right, give me one more. Come on. 16 divided by four. 16 divided by four is what? Four. 
So we can also do 4 times 4 equals 16. So you can use multiplication to also help you solve division or to check for division. All right, now, you can never divide any number by what? What can we not divide any number by? Zero. All right, do you know your division vocabulary? So what is the number, if we had our division house or whatever you want to call that, what is the number on the inside called? The number on the inside called? Uh, all right, so this is your dividend. All right, what is the number on the outside called? The divisor. Divisor. And then what is the number on top called? Channel? Quotient. All right, so based off of these three words that we just write, the easiest one to determine is obviously our quotient because that is our answer. Okay. Now, which one goes first? The dividend or the divisor? Which one goes first? The dividend. So the number on the inside is the number that always goes first. Okay? And then obviously, divisor is second. So you take your dividend divided by your divisor and you get your quotient. Okay, so down here we're only going to do one of these. We're not going to do both. This is just kind of getting our brains thinking about long division. So let's do the second one. It says David has 48 M&Ms in his bag. David wants to split his M&Ms evenly between his three siblings and himself. How many M&Ms will each person get? All right, so what's important in this question, because it is a word problem, so we do need to be annotating. Ronnie? All right, because that is our total. All right, what else is important? Delilah? Um, what number do you think is equal to the Okay, so Delilah, are we splitting by three or are we splitting by four? Four. All right, so please make sure you're going to split by four, which means we're actually going to do what by four? Divide. All right, and then our question is, how many M&Ms will each person get? So we're going to do 48 divided by 4. How many times does 4 go into 4? William? 1. 1. Bring down my 8. How many times does 4 go into 8? Twice. So each person is going to get 12. Okay, is it coming back to you now? A little bit? Breaking some, some of those winter break cobwebs that we haven't used our brains like this in a hot minute? Yes, no? A little bit? Okay. When you are doing long division, there are a couple things you can do with your answers. Your answers are called what? No. Nope. Well, yes, but I mean, um, the numbers that are left over. Talk about those. What are those called? They are called remainders. So what's one way that we can write our remainders? One way that we can write our remainders. Mikhail? <coughs> Say it again. You're going to use a fraction. What's another way you can write your remainder? So we have fractions, help. I need new friends. No. Decimals. What's the last word? The last word. It's not written like this too often. Like a little R, right? A little remainder, a little R for remainder. All right, so we're going to go through and we're going to, 
obviously talk about the steps, um, and then we're going to talk about how to write our remainders, and then we're going to do some practice. All right, so the steps for long division is you start with, so you're going to divide first. Multiply a second. Subtract third. And then, oops. I was super excited about freeing down the number. So. Bring down that next number. All right, down here you have some examples. So you have 75 divided by three, and they said that that equals 25. So you do three times two, which gave you six, and then you subtract, and then you bring down your five. Okay, I mean, that is the process. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and really repeat. You repeat the process unless it tells you to write it as a decimal fraction or a remainder. Um, so let's go ahead and try the first one. 95 divided by 5. So walk me through the steps. So step number one says we divide. So we're getting ready to divide. So then what do we have to do next? What does step number two tell us to do? Everyone just wrote this on your paper, so everybody should have their hand up. I'm not asking you to do any math. I'm just asking you to read a word. All right? Cristiano. All right, so I'm gonna multiply five times something to get me to nine without going over. So I'm gonna get as close to that nine as possible without going over, Donovan. One. All right, so then step number three tells me to subtract, so I'm gonna do nine minus five, which gets me four, and step number four tells me to bring down. All right, and then you repeat the process all over again. What is Five times what gives me 45? Five times what gives me 45? Four? Nine. Nine. All right, so then my answer for this one is 19. All right, this is going to be pretty simple math today because this isn't like a, like, let's jump right into the craziness. This is simply getting our minds back into the mode of thinking about doing division and using long division. All right, so let's do the next one. Someone walk me all the way through the whole process here. All right, Ronnie. So we do three, three times three So we did that process, and then we repeated it again. So three times what? Two. No, three times what? It's going to give me 27, or 21. Seven. How do you know that you're able to stop on these? Like, how do we know that 19 was our answer? How do we know that 27 was our answer? Five. Because we got to zero. Because we got to zero. You have a zero at the end that's when you can stop. All right, that's where it does get a little bit difficult when we're dividing decimals because sometimes we feel like we've got to go to a zero and we might be going for a couple days if we went to a zero. All right, so the rule of thumb once we get to that point is I say stop after your third decimal. Because if not, I mean, you could legit go on for days to try and figure it out. All right, let's do one more. Let's do this last one right here. 92 divided by four. So we'll walk me through the process. All right, Mikael, nice and loud. Uh, we multiply four by two to get Okay. 
x so that we know that our answer is 23. All right, questions about long division or the process? Pretty easy for the most part at the moment. All right, let's slide over to what about remainders? Because this, like I said, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult for us. All right, so there are three, or when there's a remainder, there are three ways, three ways to write it. So we're gonna say the little r, or you, sometimes it's a capital R, but the little r, <coughs> the fraction, and the decimal. Now we've already practiced writing our uh, division as fractions. I feel like we've done that. Did we do that? We did that, right? Not losing my mind. Okay. So in this example right here that they give you, it says for this unit we are going to write our remainders as what? What's the example of? What they write the remainder as? Kylie? Fraction. Fraction. <coughs> All right, so we have four problems across the bottom. The first one, you're gonna solve and write your remainder as a fraction. The second one, you're gonna write as a decimal. The third one, you're gonna write with a remainder. Oops. And the last one, you pick what you wanna do. So, choice, doesn't matter, but it has to be one of those three. All right, so let's go through the first one. 65 divided by 2. Alright, what do we multiply 2 by to get 6? Aiden? 3. So I put my 3 up there, I do my subtraction, 6 minus 6 is 0, and I bring down my 5. Alright, what do I multiply 2 by to get 5? Ronnie? 2. So I do 2 times 2, which is 4, 5 minus 4 is 1. And then I do the process of the circle, arrow, circle, arrow. And the answer becomes 32 and a half. Questions about that one? All right, let's look at the next one. 97 divided by four. So this one we're writing as a decimal. All right, so what do we multiply four by to get close to nine? Camden, what do we multiply four by to get close to nine? Two. So I multiply four times two, which gives me eight. Then I do nine minus eight, which is one, and then I bring down my seven. What do I multiply four by to get really close to 17? Okay. So four times four is 16. 17 minus 16 is 1. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky with dividing decimals. So what do we do here? What do we do here? So I add a 0 here and I bring it down, right? Okay. 4 times what gives me 10? Four times what gives me 10? I need new hands, guys. This is basic multiplication. Everybody with their hand up, put your hands down. Tyra. Two. Two. All right, so four times two is eight. And then add another zero, because remember I said the rule of thumb is to go three decimals. All right, four times what gives me 20? Christiana. Five. All right, so my answer for this one is 24 and 25 hundredths. All right, the next one, 109 divided by six. What do we multiply six by to get one? Anything? No. All right, what do we multiply six by to get 10? Put your hand down, put your hand down, put your hand down, put your hand down. Put your hand down. You can keep your hand up. You can keep your hand up. You have to put your hand up. Um, no. All right, so I do my subtraction, 
and I end up with four, bring down my nine. What do I multiply six by to get close to 49 without going over? Leo. What do I multiply six by? Get close to 49 without going over. That's why you need to be paying attention, guys. Troy. Six times eight. Eight, yes. All right, so we're writing this as a remainder. So this is our remainder right here, right? The one is our remainder, so we're gonna write 18 little r All right, the last one you are doing on your own because that's your choice. So you're either writing it as a fraction, a decimal, or a remainder. Stand up when you have that done. that we are doing together today is this problem down here. And the reason we're going to do this problem together is because we have to figure out what would be the, west, the best way to write our answer for this question. Would it be as a fraction? Would it be as a decimal? Would it be as a remainder? All right, so I don't know. Um, this person has slept 85 hours in the last 10 days. If she slept the same number of hours each night, how many hours does she sleep per night? All right, so we know that 85 hours is how much she slept in the last 10 days. Key information is that she slept the same number of hours each night, and we have to figure out how many hours does she sleep per night. All right, so which number goes inside of our division house, the 10 or the 85. Christiana? 85. 85, because that is our total, that's what we're dividing. And then obviously the 10 goes on the outside. So what can we multiply 10 by to get really close to 85 without going over? All right, so now our answer, our whole number is gonna be eight. We have five left over or five tenths left over. So would we write eight little r five? Would that make any sense to our answer? That would tell us that it's, they, she slept eight remainder five hours per night. That doesn't make sense, right? So you can write it as eight and a half or you can write it as eight and a half. Does that make more sense? Okay, and that's why it's important um, to, um, that is why it's important to kind of understand each way to write it, so the remainder, the fraction, or the decimal, because depending on what the question is asking will determine how you write your answer, or what your answer choices are. Okay? 
Right, so that kind of tells you if it's gonna make sense to write it that way or if you have to do it a different way. All right, thumbs up when you have this written down. All right, flip your paper over. On the left side, this is going to be some partner work. All right, you and your partner are gonna pick four of the problems up here and one of the word problems, okay? So four problems there and one word problem. All right, slide over to the right side. This is your homework. This is due tomorrow. All of it. It's technically 10 questions. It's not that much. Okay? Do not let me catch you working on your homework in class. You understand? You and your partner are working on this side only. So everyone take a paper. Fold it in half so you don't need to put your hand inside. All right, you have about 10 minutes. You and your partner may move around the room, you may sit, work with people at the table, doesn't really matter. Uh, just don't come over here by the ladder. That's the only thing I ask is if you're not over here. Um, and get to work. Emma, you and Isaac need to copy down the notes from today. Those are up there. Thank you.